How do you think you would do in a Saul kind of situation? No, not great. No. <laughs> Welcome to Convo Fango. Today, we are chatting totally killer with director Nanachka Khan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for coming to hang out with us. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> um, I am a huge nerd for this movie. I had so much fun with it. Um, you take us back to the 80s, which I'm a huge fan of, but I'm wondering visually, what's your favorite decade or era? Do you gravitate towards the 80s or do you have another one that is just like speaks to you? That's a great question. I think 80s is really fun because of, you know, all the elements, you know, at play. Um, I think uh, 80s would definitely be it for me. I feel like I like 90s too. Like I do like that sort of like, you know, kind of underground like grunge vibe of the 90s. But I think I think 80s, 90s is cool. Nice. It's also weirding me out that like I, I was always fine with like 80s as being like a vintage kind of thing. But now that 90s is becoming like a vintage look and like costumes, it's that freaks me out a little bit. <laughs> You're, no one's ready. No one's no. ready when it comes to them. No. Like not the 90s. Don't right? go for the 90s. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this yeah. is for like my mom's stuff. This isn't for me yet. What are you, right. Why are you coming for me? <laughs> right. That's it. <laughs> Deeply uncomfortable. Okay. <laughs> This is shockingly to me, this is your first foray into horror. Um, do you consider yourself a horror fan? Totally. I've just been like a fan of the genre. Mm -hmm. um, and it was so much fun to get to to make something in this space because I love watching it. So it was like really a uh, treat to be able to do it. Nice. Do you gravitate towards horror comedies or do you like just like very, very dark stuff and you're going to shock us with like you watch like the the craziest <laughs> deep cuts? <laughs> yeah, I, like, I watch those like real intense uh no I um I love horror comedy I, I think Scream is is you know for me one of the most amazing movie yeah I mean perfect the whole franchise but the original Scream you were just like blown away mm -hmm. um but I also love like kind of just the more straight horror too like I love the Conjuring universe I think is is pretty amazing um and all the offshoots of it like I feel like Annabelle Comes Home doesn't get enough love I don't understand why because it's so good <laughs> Like, I love it so much. Um, and yeah, I'm like sucker for found footage. You know, Blair Witch, I think is an amazing one. I just watched a small movie called The Unbinding that I thought was really kind of cool and well done and interesting. So yeah, I just love the genre. Nice. Um, did you, I feel like with a lot of horror fans, a lot of us came to the genre maybe a little too young. Did, did you come to it too young as well? <laughs> well, I mean, for me, like my parents didn't allow horror movies okay. and then like my parents are both from Iran. And so like they have that sort of superstition, like immigrant mentality, especially my mom. So she was like, no devil things, like <laughs> nothing, no Satan. Like you can't like even like those cheap, like Walmart costumes where it was like the devil mat, like that red. Mm -hmm. She was like, none of that. <laughs> no Casper is not a friendly ghost. Like <laughs> so it was like. I had to go to my friend's houses to watch horror. So mm -hmm. I kind of, I had to be active. So I didn't come to it too young. I can't, but cause I actively had to seek it out. You yeah. Know, it's not in my house. I think parents maybe don't realize when they like make it such a forbidden fruit, we just seek it out like 10 times hard. <laughs> That's all we want. We're like, I just want to watch Faces of Death. At my friend's exactly. <laughs> I was like, listen, I would have been happy with Casper, but you pushed me towards <laughs> snuff films, mom. I don't know. I don't know right. what to tell you. <laughs> exactly now I'm watching Exorcist you know yeah. like, is this what you wanted <laughs> <laughs> is this what you want are you happy <laughs> <laughs> so who are you drawing on any kind of movies in particular as you're making this or did you have kind of any inspiration or just things that you would kind of reference just in the back of your mind yeah I mean um you know obviously Back to the Future is a big touchstone for this movie so that's an extreme I think is just tonally something that you know everybody aspires to um <laughs> and then like the horror uh genre like the straight one I think the original Halloween um there's a little bit of a nod there the um the original Friday the 13th some of those POV shots um but yeah I think you know and then some of those like 80 slashers like just like the, having fun with the just little like tips of the hat here and there yeah this is definitely a very fun movie, um, probably surprising nobody. You have quite a background in comedy, which I, which you very much have on display here, which I loved. 
Um, there's a lot of great, well, even just like these like throwaway jokes. There's a lot of jokes that are like, ah, that's a hard hitting obvious joke. And then you have like these little throwaway jokes, like eighties weed ain't shit to like, like a modern <laughs> teenager. Like we were talking about this after and like, you know, like Phil was like, I didn't catch that the first time. And we just thought it was like hilarious, but there's like all these little layered comedic moments in there that lends levity because the slasher parts are actually scary when you're like, Oh, everyone's actually getting, getting stabbed 16 times. Like that is, that's intense. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad. You, thank you for the kind words. I'm so glad you appreciate uh, the jokes and the, and the humor and all that. Cause like it is, you know, we really wanted to, it was important that the slasher feel intense and, you know, like feel like this is a maniac. This is a, a psychopath and a killer. So, you know, not having the comedy kind of bleed into those scenes and letting those like stand on their own and play for what they are, which are kind of, you know, it's brutal killer on the loose. Um, and so weaving the comedy kind of around those scenes and sort of doing the handoff um, in a way that, you know, hopefully feels tonally uh, satisfying, you know, so you're not feeling those gears shifting. Yeah, no, the the horror parts are definitely straight horror. Like there's no comedy in a, a girl brutally being stabbed 16 times. And, and you feel that like there's just something so disgustingly brutal about that. That's yeah. stabbing. And when it's like multiple stabs like that, that that has always just kind of made me like, ugh, like, yeah. the sound yeah no nah. the sound I know like the brutality of it you know yeah. it's just like I mean killing anything but yeah just that hand hit, being so close yeah um, yeah I think the only time we have comedy come into any kill scene is that one of the very last ones when we we can do spoilers right because it's already out it's so. already out so you okay, go, yeah. let's go yeah uh when her like throat gets slit you know and then <laughs> oh, she presses the rape alarm as oh, she's no. dying like that was the only time that we were like we ha- i have to have this in here <laughs> that that was a fun one i mean r.i.p but yeah that was yeah, just because yeah. the little callback to it what if my throat gets slit before i can press the rape whistle right. and then it happens and i'm like oh God. I'm like oh my god this is it it's happening it's terrible but wonderful at the same time because I also always wonder the same thing I'm like all right we, we like we have grown up in a time where we're so like hyper conscious you know of like self-defense and things I'm like but what if my throat gets slit and then I hit my alarm like <laughs> someone will come and find my body I guess at least like that's right yeah <laughs> like, what if the order is wrong what if I don't <laughs> <laughs> I can't get it in the right order of things. <laughs> oh, no. It's very stressful. Being a woman in the world is a, is a stressful thing. Like that's the thing. It's like it's stressful all the time. Like that's mm-hmm. what people don't really, you know, people who aren't women don't realize that like walking to your car is stressful in certain situations. You know, like every, you just have to be aware. Going to a bar, like mm-hmm. don't leave your drink unattended. Like just things that, like you know, I think other people don't have to think about yeah like we live in a horror movie all the time but we just it's it's just our normal stasis kind of thing so we just it just is we just accept it yeah (laughs) Yeah. like you learn to make wolverine claws with your keys from the time that you're like 13 years old and walk like that i'm like thing actually to really have to think about that i know it's so wild you just like walk around with your keys like that like everybody's mom teaches them like (laughs) i remember my mom was getting it was like there's a new thing where like killers hide under your car or something and they like cut your Achilles or something. Like, you know what I mean? like, just, like, all of these. I'm like, Ugh, all right, now you got to like look under the, I don't want my Achilles to be cut. I'm just going to get in the car. Well, cause then you're fucked. Cause you can't run away. That's the it. best you got is an army crawl. And I don't know. I mean, my upper body strength is decent, but I don't know how fast I can. <laughs> no, I can't crawl away like that. I'm going to definitely be overtaken. <laughs> you got to check under the car and you got to check the back seat. And you got to have the Wolverine claws ready to go to like take an eyeball out at any given moment. (laughs) That's right. Why are we stressed all the time? I don't know. You know. (laughs) (laughs) Um, uh, So kind of back to the comedy part of it, you have those kind of aside things. I also love because we're dealing with these different generations and different decades. And it's just kind of, again, like the throwaway things, but it's like, there's moments of like the mom smoking in the car with her kids and it's stuff that like, we know now we're like watching it in horror, but back then it's like, yeah, that's fine. It's not a big deal. <laughs> totally. Like now we're laughing at like, there's a shot of this like little girl's face in the back seat, just, you know, in this smoke filled <laughs> hot box. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's just normal. And, you know, I used to fly with my mom who smoked on planes and remember there was like, smoking sections. And so we were like in the back three rows or whatever, but the whole plane is 
the smoke. Like there's nowhere for the, the smoke is just everywhere. Yeah. So, <laughs> and it was just like, all right. And like, sometimes even now when you're flying, do you find this where you, we're on an old plane and they still have like the ashtrays in the seat? Um, I have not come across. <laughs> no. I'm clearly <laughs> flying on the wrong airline. What airline are you flying? <laughs> <I know. laughs> but like sometimes they'll just like, it'll still be there, but it'll be glued shut. Yeah. And I'm like, guys, we can, let's just update this. <laughs> we don't need to see this. <laughs> let's just swap out the armrest. If you want to keep the plane fine, but maybe let's swap those armrests. <laughs> How expensive could it be? We just right. need a new armrest. Exactly. <laughs> just to let me know that I'm not flying on an ancient airplane. Right. Like, <laughs> like the, the state of the art 1984 plane. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. um, as a fan of Mad Men, those elements were like extra layered with the comedy for me because I feel like Mad Men did little nods to that sort of thing, like drinking while you're pregnant, smoking while you're pregnant. And now we're like, oh my God. And it and Kieran and Chipka obviously was all, also in Mad Men. So watching her in this and have those kind of parallels was a was an extra added nice little like wink. <laughs> totally. I agree. Yeah. One of my favorite scenes in Mad Men, I think, is uh some like little kid is running around with like the plastic bag from like the <laughs> cleaner like over their head. Or yeah. and just, like, everyone's like, oh that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like this is fine. This is cool. How did everyone survive? I don't know. They did. They were they fine, did. but we don't yeah. do that anymore. We know better. <laughs> let's talk about uh the killer's mask um i'm wondering in the world of totally killer does that mask kind of have like a backstory like kids of the 80s are buying this mask is he like is he a cartoon character is he a, a burger mascot like what what is, do you have an origin story for this guy <laughs> yeah like well when we were sort of coming up with like okay i mean obviously like any good slasher has to have an iconic mask mm -hmm. so it's like what's that gonna look like we had all the references of of the ones that have come before. And I think when we landed on the idea of like a handsome man being scary, that kind of started to open it up for us because normally like, you know, Michael Myers being one of the most famous examples, but it's like you almost take away features mm -hmm. and that's what makes that scary because it just looks like a blank canvas and there's no emotion, no expression. But it's like, if you're, if a handsome man is smiling at you as he's killing you, uh, that's also very, quite scary. And it feels <laughs> really relevant still like you know that there's so many things because in our movie the mythology you know this these kills happened 35 years ago but people in the town still dress up like the sweet 16 killer in the present day so wanting it to feel not 100 percent nostalgic like wanting it to play in both both timelines but um but knowing that it originated in the 80s so we started pulling um heartthrob references like 80s like handsome <laughs> teen idol guys or whatever so it was like Rob Lowe and Dolph Lundgren and, you know, Kiefer Sutherland, like all those Lost Boys. Um, we gave him a little Lost Boys earring. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, and it was just like a right touch of camp, you know, and then Tony Gardner and his team at Alterian, who are the mask designers, and they created a bunch of like creature masks um, for other movies. They then exaggerated the features. So he has like this perfect smile, but it almost becomes like shark-like because it's mm -hmm. the teeth are too big. And it feels threatening. And it's just like that idea of like a smiling, handsome man being the last thing you see, I think is just scary. It, it terrifies me, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same. <laughs> I'm very handsome, but I'm also menacing. Like, it's like, ugh. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I'm, I'm drawn to you, but I'm scared of you. Like that sort of thing, <laughs> yeah. you know? <laughs> like like the kind of vampire vibe but but for humans you know what i mean it's like you you are designed to lure your prey in so what's what's scarier than like a handsome kind of killer that's that yeah. always creeps me out because you want exactly. it to be the guy where you're like uh stay away from that one that one's kind of creepy you know yeah. but it's that's not always the case <laughs> no you want it to be that immediate like yeah you know like okay that, there's a dude in the corner i'm not going near him or whatever but the scarier well i mean they're both scary but the scary <laughs> version is this guy who seems nice and he's like appealing or, you know, it's the Ted Bundy mm -hmm. killer next door idea. Um, just sort of, you know, exaggerated a little bit for them for mask, you know, effect. And that's why I walk around with the Wolverine keys at all times. <laughs> <laughs> it all comes back. <laughs> Full circle, baby. Um, this story plays also with our kind of our, our, our obsession as a society with, with true crime. What are your feelings on that? Where do you personally land? Are you a fan of true crime? Do you feel like it kind of sometimes veers into exploitation? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think, you know, I think for whatever reason as a society, like we are just fascinated by horrific events and, you know, committed by real people. And I think there's just an element of you that's like, how would I have reacted in that, in that situation? Like if, 
this, you know, I was living next door to, yeah, like Jeffrey Dahmer, what I have known, like, so I think there is something that's really fascinating about that. And so I, you know, I listen to like the, like serial and I watch like all those, like, you know, Golden State Killer documentaries. I mean, there is an element of that that I, I'm a hundred percent like lean into and like try, you know, I'm fascinated by, but I do think like there is, it's, it's very macabre. It's very dark. You know, I think it lends itself to horror, but um you know, they have murder tours, like literally throughout Los Angeles, you know, they've got like the death tours and, and, you know, you see just like famous houses where people die and the Manson murders and all that. And it's like, yeah, there's, there's just something fascinating about it that I, it's just, you can't look away. I don't know, you know, what that is, but it's definitely there. We're just morbid fuckers, I guess. <laughs> I guess so. There's no like happy tour. It's not like this oh, is where right. someone's proposed to so and so. It's like, no, <laughs> boring. I actually, I do run that tour and I have not had a single person sign up yet. So there's that, you know, it's just you driving around (laughs) (laughs) talking to myself, practicing on my dog, just giving her the tour over and over again. Yeah. (laughs) She hates it. (laughs) Uh, Do you think that you would be a final girl if you were in a horror movie? I mean, here's the thing. It depends on what kind of horror movie I feel Ah. like I I would be overtaken you know, like, I'm not gonna, I'm not the fastest. So it's like, if I have to run through the wood, like, I'm not going to get away. So I think, you know, if it was more like psychological, like if it was like a Freddy Krueger in my dreams, maybe I could get, I'd be fun of her because I would have like some sort of mind control. Mm -hmm. I feel like I would have more control in that realm than if I was being chased through the forest. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So you'd rather face off against Freddy then like you would choose Freddie over Michael Myers or like Jason. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Sure. I feel like I would go the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> you think that you could like, <laughs> so how would you, <laughs> well, I feel very judged right now. You, you no, no, no. <laughs> I really want to know like, how do you feel like you would escape Michael Myers and Jason? Like, would you just like turn the table up? Would you get a gun? Like how you can't kill oh. them. Is she is sheer will? I don't know. I feel like I would hope that my you know what my endurance is shit. I'm gonna be honest. So <laughs> I'm hoping that I would have to like be a little wily about it. Also, mm-hmm. I feel like I'm I'm small, but I'm scrappy, and I mm-hmm. feel like I I am fast. I'm kind of small, so I could maybe like hide in places or like jump over fences or something. I don't know, but yeah. I I just feel like Freddie, I would be fucked. I'm like I have no control over my dreams. I just watch them helplessly like play out during a nightmare, like. I don't lucid dream. I can't be like, this is a dream. Wake up. Like I would just be dead instantly. No hope. (laughs) I get that. I get that. Being fast. I mean, that is quite an asset. That's for sure. I mean, you could, (laughs) those guys are not fast. So I feel like you could outrun them. I say fast, but I'm also like fast, but not like in like, I'm not 17 anymore. So I'm maybe not (laughs) in the best shape. So I don't know. No, I mean, listen, you don't have to like be an Olympic, you know, track (laughs) runner or whatever, but it's like, if they're after you, I feel like you would be like, I'm out of here adrenaline you know what I mean like when I hear a fake chainsaw and I know it's a fake chainsaw at a haunt like my legs do like a weird scooby-doo like run in place and then I just take (laughs) off running and I'm apologizing profusely to everyone around me but I cannot stop so I feel like fight or flight is strong the flight just (laughs) are you the kind of person that just starts running without asking questions like you would you just like if there was like a loud sound you would just take off running yes ask questions later I will investigate this later because I will be alive hopefully to investigate it later I don't need to stick around and be like what was that oh you know (laughs) see that's what I would I feel like that's why our answers are correct for us because I would be I'm like a little curious and a little like not quick to be like oh someone's coming after me I would be like what is that who is that (laughs) And then I'm dead. Yeah, no. So we, okay. I think you chose correctly for, we, we know our strengths and our weaknesses. We I think. And that's, that's, that about that's how you be a final girl. You got to know what your weaknesses are and you got to play to your strength. That's true. <laughs> that's very true. How do you think you would do in a saw kind of situation? No, not great. No, <laughs> <laughs> I really wouldn't. Like, I, you know, I don't like pain. Mm-mm. I'm not you know, I think I would break pretty quickly and, you know, not really <laughs> wouldn't last. No. You don't think you could like dig a key out from behind your eyeball per se that for some reason that no. one has always stuck with me. Cause I don't think <laughs> I can do it. No, I would prefer my saw to be like the AMC spoof <laughs> where <laughs> that I can, you know, I can go to the theater. <laughs> 
like be taken over by magic of movies or whatever but no that's it <laughs> that's that's your version of the trap it's you billy the puppet sharing a little popcorn right it's a lovely afternoon <laughs> you know i love that for you i i would like to manifest that for you <laughs> also i need to see that commercial <laughs> Okay, let's say you are the final girl and you're doing your showdown, you're beating the shit out of Freddy Krueger. What would you want your kill song to be? Oh. We'll pretend you can hear it while it's playing because I feel like that music is motivation. I feel like that would help. <laughs> totally. I feel like it's got to be like something like driving, but like a little more. How about Glycerine by Bush? Oh, okay. That's nice. You know, <laughs> like I feel like that will, it's unexpected. So it's not like hard, hard, but it is like a driving beat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think it would motivate me to just keep stabbing, you know? <laughs> just keep stabbing, just keep stabbing. <laughs> yeah. No, I like that. I'm like watching it in my head and I'm like, yes, I I approve of this answer. It's a good answer. I mean, as a 90s, as a 90s child, I think, you know, glycerine for you, would, you know, you get It speaks that. to me. It absolutely yeah, speaks exactly. to me. <laughs> Um, I do, I do have to also mention, I did say that you worked on a lot of comedy. Um, I would be remiss if I did not take this opportunity to say you also worked on Pepper Ann and Recess, which are things that I watch every week. So um, yeah, that was very interesting. I was like, what? <laughs> I know. I'm so glad that was my first job. You know, I, I came out of, I went to USC in the film program, with my emphasis in writing and the first job, the first writing job I got was working for Disney animation on Pepper Ann. And I got to hire like my friends who were like giving tram tours at Universal Studios oh. and like, you know, we we're like temping and stuff. And like, we were just, we got to make like 65 half hours of that show. And it was really like grad school for me. Cause I got to see how something, you know, take it from like beginning to end and like produce an actual thing. It was so fun. I loved it. That is a great first job. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, first like writing job. Right, right. <laughs> first other jobs are, you know, not as not as great. It's like, wow, I work in a movie theater. Like I produce Pep Rat now. <laughs> yeah, first exactly. out of school, like like launching your career job. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I also <laughs> obviously went through a phase where I wear a lot of hats and beanies, but I did the whole like my hair was longer and I had pigtails and beanies all the time. So, <laughs> so great. I love that. Formative. It was formative stuff. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. Is there anything else you would like to share with us before we go? Um, if you want to say spoilery stuff too, you can. <laughs> no, I think, I mean, listen, I'm so excited that you love the movie. I'm thrilled it's out there and, you know, that people are finding it and like, it's just fun. It's like a fun wild ride. And so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited uh, to talk to you about it and you know just for people to go out and see it or I guess stream it whatever yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> um I texted my mom immediately like just a few minutes into the movie and I was like put this movie on right now also my mom would 100% have bullied me if I went back in time <laughs> I was in high school with her I mean that was so much fun for me because it's like what if your mom like every so, so like emotional and her mom has already died in the movie you know now she sees her again and she's alive and then she's like I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> like, get off the court, loser. You yeah. know, you're out, bitch. And so I just think it's such a funny idea of like, your mom hating you when you're both peers. <laughs> your mom just punking you left and right. Yeah. yeah. I think my mom would maybe, I, I, my, my mom is a sweetheart and wonderful to me, but I think if I, she didn't know it was me and we went back in time, she maybe would have been a little bit of an asshole to me and like blown weed in my face. And I, I would have been very straight laced, like, uh, uh, no, you know, <laughs> like nerd. I'm like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> hardcore bullying yeah <laughs> love, that. love that for me okay <laughs> all right everyone go watch totally killer on prime it is streaming now it is a great time watch it with your mom if you can if you're lucky enough to get to do that do that because it's a, it's a good time 